President Mohamed Buhari on Monday described the Dangote refinery as a significant milestone for Nigeria's economy and a game changer for downstream petroleum products in market in the entire African region. The president inaugurated the refinery in Ibejuleki, Lagos, which is expected to enable Nigeria to achieve self-sufficiency in refined products and even have a surplus for export. The president acknowledged that Nigeria's economy had faced significant challenges over the year and stressed the need for African countries to unite, integrate their economies, eliminate trade barriers and rally their populations to achieve Agenda 2063 for the continent's prosperity. The big question after that inauguration obviously is what about our government-owned refineries. To discuss this with us is Fine Face Dumnamene. He is the Executive Director, Youth and Environmental Advocacy Center. And also joining us is Ayo Agwarugi. He is an oil and gas expert. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us, and good evening. Thank you for having me. Good evening to you. Thank you for having me. Good evening. Yes, I'll start with you, Fine Face. Um, interestingly, a lot of people we're uh, wondering why government was so excited. And I mean, it's okay to throw your weight behind the richest man in uh, one of the richest men in Africa, um, who has, of course, achieved defeats that not even government was able to do in so many years. And I'm not just talking about the government of President Muhammad Buhari, but successive government. But the bigger question is, what happens to our other refineries, including the modular refineries that government had promised that they would revive and start, you know, um, so that we could also start, um, you know, having our own crude oil instead of spending monies to import these crude into the country. Um, for someone who, you know, uh, is into um, this particular conversation, and we've had conversations around the oil and gas sector, why do you think that government is supporting the Dangote refinery, but then tight-lipped about our refineries, even though there's been monies um, that have been earmarked for turnaround maintenance year in, year out? Yeah, I think, uh, I think government is excited because the shame has been removed from the face of the government of the day, because it's been a very big shame to us as a people that... Uh, a country that, you know, is one of the largest producer of crude oil in Africa will not be able to refine its own product. I think um, commissioning this particular facility right now is something that I think has been able to, you know, address the issue of subsidy for which uh, we are suffering in this country, for which we have had a lot of corruption around it. And the government excitement is not really from their mind because it is a shame to Nigeria as a country that we could not fix our refineries and be able to refine, you know, petroleum products that, you know, people can buy and that can be in country. But we export this uh, crude oil outside and then import, you know, the refined products into the country after creating jobs in those countries and then we are unable to fix our refineries. So as it is now, Dangote has promised to hold you know, from the capacity of the refinery he has put in place, is going to, you know, refine what is going to be sufficient for Nigeria, and then excess will remain for sale to, you know, other parts of Africa and, of course, other countries that may have it. So I think that what has happened at this point in time is a welcome development, but then we need to still look inwards to the issue of revamping our own you know, state-owned refineries, the two Potaco refineries, the Wari refineries, and the Kaduna refineries, they still have to come on board. The fact that we have uh, had a private refinery in place now does not mean that we should not have the state-owned refineries in place, because if we should only allow the Dangote refinery to produce, then we are going to be left at the mercy of the price of a private refinery that is producing in the country. So I think that when we have our refineries fixed, it's going to address the issue of competition within the system. And I also do not want the government to be deceived that because the Dangote refinery has come on stream and because we have now had, uh, you know, our main refinery may also come on stream based on the turnaround maintenance that is going on, that we should not give modular refinery licenses for the youth who are involved in artisanal crude oil refining anymore. Hmm. Because government may be thinking that because Dangote is going to produce sufficient for the country, 
and the main refinery is also coming on board that the modular refinery for artisanal refiners is no longer necessary. I will tell government that if they think that way, then it is no longer very, very necessary thinking that they are having because the youth will not fail to continue to break the pipelines. Mm. They will not fail to continue to refine. They, they will not fail to continue to have the environment polluted in the process and make government to lose revenue. Because even the, the, the crude oil that has been promised in Odangote today, if they do not give modular refinery licenses to the youth who are involved in pipeline vandalism, it's still going to be a challenge for Dangude refinery to be able to depend on the mm. flow of crude to that particular facility. Mm. Because if the pipeline is being vandalized, they will not have enough feed to give to the Dangote refinery. So mm. government should continue to make this possible. And I also know quite well that as we speak today, we are having this issue of non-availability of kerosene in our local communities that depend on this product. I don't also know the promise that modular refinery, I mean, a Dangote refinery is giving us in terms of being able to produce kerosene. But as we speak today, it is the youth who are involved in artisanal refining that are for providing kerosene for the local community. So government needs to still look at the entire policy holistically and be able to fix this. Okay. Look at Dangote said they've put the refinery together with $19 billion. Nigerian government has $19 billion more than three times to use some build new refineries if mm. they cannot re re rehabilitate the new one, the old ones. Interesting. Let me come to you, um, Mr. Um, Agbarabi. Um, a year ago, um, the NMPC boss, uh, G the GMD, Mr. Kiare, uh, was quoted to say that um, uh, the refineries in Nigeria um, has had 25 years of bad management, and, and that was responsible for the poor state of the refineries 25 years that in other words he inherited these bad refineries he said this a year ago to an ad hoc committee at the house of representatives on um, you know um, investigating the refineries in nigeria uh, that was an excuse that he gave this government is about to conclude eight years and he was one of the people who was at that event yesterday um, applauding Mr. Dangote for the feat that he has accomplished. Um, I'd like for us to take a listen to what Mr. Chiari had to say, and then, of course, uh, we'll talk about it. Today, of this refinery, is a defining moment for the energy industry in Nigeria, for the region, and on the international scale. It carries the potential to support security of supply for refined petroleum products and petrochemicals in Nigeria, and the region, as clearly articul articulated by Elijah Aliko Dangote. It opens the possibility of genuine commercial market and step forward in our collective efforts to make key Nigeria a net exporter of petroleum products to the international markets. Isn't this a shame that the, the NNPC boss was applauding someone else for doing something that it was within the purview of government to have at least, um, you know, revive some of these refineries, if not all, in the eight years that they've been in government. Mr. Barogi, this question is for you. Can you hear me? Uh, I think that you cannot hear me. So I'm going to come back to you, fine face. Again, um, Mr. Mr. Kerry is saying that, you know, he's applauding the feet of Mr. Dangote, but I'm asking, in eight months, why have they not been able to at least revive some of these refineries? Yeah, I think he has no choice but to congratulate Dangote Refinery and Dangote himself, because uh, what we heard from the launch was that the project was started in 2017. And it was mm. under this particular administration that that project started. And this is 2023. And the, the project is on board. 19 billion is not up to what they spend on subsidy. This is what the NMPC uh, was supposed to be able to do. Now we have the NMPC Limited. They would have also taken over and be able to do. It's not rocket science. It's something that I think if they are committed to doing, they will be able to do. This is something that even if you bring in the public-private partnership, they will also be able to make this happen. And I think it's a slap on the face of the government of Nigeria that they could not fix our refineries in eight years of at least the President Muhammad Buhari administration. And they could not also build new refineries. Now, the refineries we have are old and obsolete. These are refineries that were built in the 70s and in the 80s. The technology has gone obsolete. And they are supposed to set up brand new 
a, 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 a refineries for the country. Look at what Dangote said, that the refinery that is built has capacity to refine the Nigerian crude and crude oil from other parts of the world. That is to say, it is so modernized that any crude oil you put in, it will be able to adjust itself to producing that product and being able to give you what you want. This is what we need. This is state-of-the-art facility that the government of Nigeria was supposed to put in place. And do not be surprised that the reason why the government of Nigeria and the people within the system have failed to fix our refineries and to build new refineries is because of the so much money they make from the inflated fuel subsidy that yeah. they continue to pay in trillions of naira. Because a lot of people within the system are allegedly using that particular you know, subsidy regime to enrich themselves. So I think they need to you know, remove this from their face. And I'm talking to and letting the president uh, you know, elect who is taking over on May 29th, which is, of course, my birthday, to remember that he is coming to inherit a system that has already failed. Huh. He's coming to, uh, 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 I mean, uh, coming to take over a system that people need him to hit the ground running almost immediately. Okay. So he should not only ensure that the refineries that are undergoing turnaround maintenance across the country today are fixed, but also be able to build new refineries that More should surpass great. what Dangote has been able to build okay. so that we can be able to refine our crude oil in the country and supply to other countries within the West African subregion and across the world as well. We have the capacity, we have the resources, and we can do it. Mr. Waragi, I, I, I guess that you're back. Let me let me ask pose another question. Um, there are people who have also blamed government for trying to do everything, saying that government has no business doing business, and that some of these all um, facilities should have been privatized years ago. Uh, the Obasanjo administration attempted to do so, and of course the Yaradu administration came back and reversed it. Um, Femi Tadala was quoted to also say that one of the biggest problems we have, and that's why our, our, our refineries are still moribund, is because we have not allowed ourselves to privatize these refineries, and uh, that by now we probably wouldn't have been talking about the, the things that we're talking about, like whether we should remove subsidy or not. But what is your thought on this particular one? I think, I think uh, my thought is privatization is not bad, to privatize is not bad, but the shady ways we do privatization in Nigeria is a pro big problem. The shady ways. If not, the Dangote thing, it's not a bad thing, but definitely like uh, uh, Fine Face has said earlier, there's going to be monopoly. We celebrate the man for doing what he, he has been able to achieve, but it's a big shame and a big slap on, on the Nigerian government. But if we privatize the oil industry, the monopoly thing will come in. It's not bad if government's hand is involved. You, you started by saying, uh, mentioning turn, turn around maintenance. You see, that thing has been that name, and I've known it as maybe like 20, 30 years, 30 something years. The system is rotting. These present refineries that we have, the three refineries that we, that we have now, the nation has, cannot, would not be able to function maximally if they are even maintained. Hmm. They are obsolete. So, yeah, they are obs totally obsolete. I've been in this talk, this business since 2008. I brought in expatriates as regarding this thing. We started this modular race. Thank God, Dunamene is in with Yak, and we're we are working together. So, for this present government, the art, um, almost, uh, almost art government to not have endorsed the modular refineries to the Niger Delta states, it's, it's a big mistake. But I know that the incoming one would pick it up from there. Oh, but, but, but the vice, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, Mr. Aguarugi. Um, the vice president um, mm -hmm. at some point did say that they were going to adopt. I remember very clearly when Vice President Jamie Shibajo had said that they were going to adopt this modular refinery it's because of, of course, the coal fire incidences in the Niger Delta, the, you know, because whether we like it or not, these guys will keep refining, they will keep breaking these pipelines. And he said that this, the best way to put an end to that was to convert them to modular refineries. They did endorse it at some point. I think the execution is what you're talking about here. Yeah, 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 I know, I know, yes. The execution is have they had with uh, Fine Face, several meetings. But the implementation, the execution, he, the vice president, has not said anything concerning this subject any longer for a, for a long while. He just kept mute. While this illegal refining is going on in the Niger Delta, polluting places, destroying crops, aquatic lives are being destroyed, and they are just there. 
the last meeting Dunamis, uh, Foreign Office had with them, we thought the president, the outgoing president, will endorse this document and say, okay, I've done it. But I know the vi vice president did something about it, said something, mentioned it, agreed that it will be done. But what have they done up to now? They have mm. not done anything concerning it, but I believe, I, I believe that they will do something. But presently, with the celebration of the um, Dangode's uh, private refinery, I didn't celebrate. I just, I have the same view that Dunamene has. I just say this is a big disgrace to the nation, and they are celebrating him like this. They, they don't know what they are doing. It's a shame on, 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 on the government. So they need to do the needful now. The incoming government must do the needful immediately they come in. They must start from where the present one is stopping. So let me ask, nice. let me they push you, let me push you further on the present, the incoming administration after May 29. Looking at the body language of the president elect and his deputy, um, what do you suppose would be their position on pushing for these refineries to either be, um, you know, um, fixed or sold or maybe building new refineries? Do you, because again, like I said earlier on, there are too many problems that we have in this country. Nigeria is highly indebted. But as Fine Face said, we have billions and billions of Naira that we've taken and we've not necessarily had anything to show for it. Do you see the, um, the Tinubu administration pushing or going in that direction or are, are they going to be resting on their oars being that, hey, we have a Dangote refinery? Now, anything contrary to what is on ground would be, I don't know, I mean, it would, the Niger data would just not be peaceful because it has to be they have to follow it to the letter they must do it the way they have met it anything contrary will not be accepted by niger, niger delta people so for us here from what we are going through the best thing the traditional gigantic refineries are no longer need, needed it, it, the uh, the uh, dangotis one that I just completed was like 10 years span or something like that the modular concept if we start today in two three years is functional and produ productive Hmm. Everything, the all byproducts of uh, the, um, the the crude will be gotten in three years maximum. Everything is concluded. So, how many how many eighteen billion dollars do we have? This will have squandered in in um uh, what's it called? How many? The man just did with eighteen million. How many? Each state can even own a refinery. The federal government can put refinery in each state. But anyway, we we'll lower it down to the Niger Delta states. We we'll just put three in three Niger Delta states of each state. That's all we are asking for. And it's doable by this government. The incoming government will just kickstart it. And then we know that there will be peace and everybody is happy. The, the, the 650,000 barrel per day. How, what will it do for us? Nothing. Because the man is a businessman who first take care of himself, take up his profit. And, and, if, and in, this my second question is, where will he get his crew from? Is it not his, from, from uh, this same crew that is coming from Niger Delta, first and foremost? So what are we saying? We need those things. And I believe the incoming government will run with it. That's my belief. Well, I, I, I wish we had more time to talk about some of the other issues that surround this and not just about the refineries. But unfortunately, this is the time that we have. Fine Face Dunan Mene is the Executive Director, Youth and Environmental Advocacy Center. And Ayo Agbarogi is an oil and gas expert. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed and watch what happens after May 29. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. thank you for having me on the program. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us uh, on the show tonight. That's it. We will be back tomorrow talking for development. But don't forget, you can play catch up with all our previous episodes on our YouTube page, which is Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Mary Anakun. Do have a pleasant evening. Good night.